I want to do a really quick run through, a, a brief review of eight as a factor and how to solve for eights in multiplication problems. Now, remember that the word factor means one of the numbers in a multiplication equation, okay? So in this case, if I was to write, say, eight times eight, this is the equation. Eight is the factor. Eight is the factor, okay? The product would be whatever our answer is. Well, let's go ahead and start at the top on our eights here. Okay, so let's start with eight times zero. We'll do eight times one, eight times two, eight times three, eight times four, eight times five, Let's look at eight times six, eight times seven, eight times eight, eight times nine. And all the way down at the bottom here, we will have eight times 10. And that's where we will leave off on our table here today. Okay, each one of these here has Eight as a factor plus one other number as a factor as well. And each one of these is called a multiplication equation. We are looking for the products to each one of these equations. Now, there are a couple rules that apply to our first one, right? When we're looking at our zeros, we're looking at what is called the zero property. This will apply to any factor multiplied by zero okay and the rule is any prop any factor multiplied by zero will be zero so this is anything multiplied by zero will be zero the product will be zero now the anytime you see a one you know that we're working looking at the identity property now in that case that is any factor multiplied by one, the product will be that factor. So in this case, we've got eight. Okay, so that is what we need to remember with these first two, our zeros and ones. Now, when you go down to twos, I like to refer to this one as doubles, okay? And I just write that down to remind you that anytime you see a factor multiplied by two, you are doubling that factor. So in this case, for instance, eight times two is the same thing as eight plus eight, two eights, right? So then you know that your answer is 16. Now, of course, if you look at this list here, you're also gonna notice that anytime we're moving up, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, we're moving up by one eight. So really eight times three is 16 plus eight eight. So you will get the same thing. Now, let's say you're in a situation where you do feel a little bit comfortable, a little more, a little more comfortable with your twos facts, and you want to use those to help solve your problem here, you can certainly do that. If it makes you more comfortable to break this apart, please remember to do that. Uh, the distributive property tells us that we can break these multiplication problems apart and solve them more easily. So let's say you didn't know eight times three to right off the bat and you knew eight times two. Well, if eight times two equals 16, then you can also take eight times one, which is eight, add those two together, right? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Carry that one, 24, which means that now you know that your answer is 24. Now, in this case, again, you're just adding another eight. You can do the same thing. You can continue breaking these apart. So let's say now that you knew you knew that you had eight times three and you knew that eight times three equals 24. And once again, you want to take an eight times one here, which is eight. You add those up, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Carry that one, 32. Okay, of course, you can also just add it. In this case, 32 plus eight, 40. Now, for a lot of you, your uh, fives are really easy. You're skip counting by five and you're getting to 40. That is great because also if you use 40 as a starting point, you can always 
subtract 8 from it to get 8 times 4, or add 8 to it to get it to get 8 times 6, okay? Which automatically, you know, just by looking at it, is 48. Okay, so after you've got 48 here, and again, these are these are pretty simple to figure out, right? Now you have to do 8 times 7. Well, if you know that 8 times 5 equals 40, all you would then have to do is figure out what 8 times, and you're just breaking these up. Think about these. We did these as arrays as well. This is basically the same thing. You're looking at different groups of 8, okay? But in this case, you need to figure out what's missing here to get this up to an 8, to get these factors right here, excuse me, to equal 7, 5, 6, 7. So 8 times 2 then is 16. That gives us... 56. Okay? So that means your answer here is 56. Now you can take 56 and just add 8 to it to get you up to the next one, right? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And you end up at 64. Now, once again, you could do 8 plus 4 here, right? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 72, okay? But again, remember, there are other ways of figuring these out as well. So let's say you, you wanted to do 8 times 9. And remember with the commutative property, guys, you can flip these around. If it's easier to look at it, it's 9 times 8. That's the same thing, okay? 9 times 8 equals 8 times 9. So whatever way helps you to look at it. And when we talk about our nines here in a second, uh, I think that it will make a little bit more sense to you when you remember that there are connections with these other areas, right? But in this case, with your tens, this is another one that I think are, the tens are, are, are fairly easy for you guys because anything multiplied by 10 is going to have a zero in the ones place. And of course, one times anything, as the identity property showed us, one times any factor is that factor, so your answer here is going to be 80. But you can also double check your work every time because 80 minus 8 is 72. So you can always go back and double check that way, okay? But one of the important things is I want you to, to remember that you can always solve these problems using the, the, distributive, uh, excuse me, the distributive property, which tells us that we can break them apart. And you can break them apart in whatever way works best for you. For some students, breaking them apart into twos or fours works a little bit better. It's a little bit easier, okay? So if that's the case for you, that's okay. You could say, let's say, let's look at one of these, uh, these higher number ones here. Let's say eight times nine. Well, if eight times nine looks intimidating to you and you don't remember the answer to that one, you might also look at it as 4 times 9 plus 4 times 9. And if you remember that 4 times 9 equals 36, then all you have to do is add those two numbers, right? 6 plus 6 is 12. Carry that one. 3 plus 3 is 6. 72. There you go. You could break it up even further, right? 2 times 9 plus 2 times 9 plus 2 times 9 plus 2 times 9, you could do that too. And that could work. That is the same thing that we did here. It's just broken up a little further. And each time, you would end up with 18, right? So really, you're looking at 18 plus 18 plus 18 plus 18. That's another way of figuring it out. And then you add all those together, and you end up with 72. Okay, so that's another way of doing it. And then, of course, you can do what we did with some of the other problems on the sheet here, some of these other equations in these multiples here. So it, these products that you see, those are multiples of 8. Multiples of 8, that's what we call those. So let's say you wanted to do 8 times 9. Let's look at 8 times 9 again but you knew what the answer to, again, let's say you knew what the answer to 8 times 8 was. 
And you said, well, a times that is 64. Well, then all you'd have to do is say a times 1, right? Take that 8, add them. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 72. There you go. Okay, so with a little bit more practice, any of these methods should work for you. But of course, at some point, many of you will probably just remember this table altogether and uh, remember the answers, the products of all of your eights, your all of your uh, your multiples of eight here. Uh, but should you need to, we, you can always come back to this and you can ask me questions, okay? All right, well, thank you, and I will talk to you soon.